You know what one of the hardest parts about being a medical student is? It's that you could study a lot, like a lot, a lot in undergrad and whatever you did before medical school. And then even in the first one and a half to two years while you're in pre-clerkship, but then when you show up on your rotations, especially your first day of a rotation, you are still going to be the least experienced person there by like three to eight years in most cases. And a lot of times it doesn't really matter what you know or how you've been doing on the tests because for a lot of these things, there's no real substitute for experience. So I just finished four weeks on OBGYN. Before then I did two weeks in orthopedic surgery. And what I wanted to do today was give you guys my best tips that I didn't know going into surgery, but I really wish that I did so that your first day on surgery goes really, really smoothly. And that hopefully your attending doesn't yell at you too much. Hopefully. Quick shout out, by the way, to today's video sponsor, KenHub, but more on them in a little bit. So tip number one, preparation before surgery. If there's one skill that you guys should all have before you show up to your very first day on surgery, it is doing a basic interrupted suture. There is a very high likelihood that one of the very first things that the surgeon will ask you to do in order to assess where you are and what you actually know is a basic interrupted. Look those up on YouTube, practice them with your own surgical kits, super high yield for your very first day. So the other high yield thing to do before surgery is that normally when you walk into where the actual operated rooms are, you'll have to pass through your change rooms first. So that way you can go ahead and put your cap on, your mask, your face shield, all of these different things. I would highly advise that before you go into surgery, you eat something. What I always do is carry around a few of these oranges, these, these little tangerines in my knapsack, and I'll eat one to two of them before I go into surgery. I'll also try and drink a decent amount of water, and that's just to prevent any vasovagal syncope or passing out in the middle of a surgery. Now, thankfully, I've never passed out in the middle of a surgery before, but there was one instance where I had to take a step back and sit down following a particularly nasty postpartum hemorrhage. But in speaking with the surgeons and other medical students, vasovagal syncope, passing out, feeling like you're gonna pass out during your first day of surgery, or surgery in general, is a way more common experience than a lot of people will think. And after talking to a few different surgeons, they've all recommended to me, drink some water beforehand, have something that's high in sugar and easy just to eat before you go in there. And this will really go a long way to keeping you on your feet. And especially if you're gonna be involved in one of those types of surgeries where your hand is going to be in the middle of a cavity filled with warm blood, blood on the floor, high stress environments, all these different experiences that you've never had before, I would highly advise getting something to eat. And as far as drinking goes, don't drink too much because you don't want to go to the bathroom or have to go to the bathroom halfway during the surgery. It's probably not going to happen. Find a good balance between something with sugar and also a little bit of water. Now, the second tip is going to be about what to do when you actually show up to the OR. And we're not going to talk about how to scrub or the importance of scrubbing properly. Scrubbing is very, very important, but hopefully your medical school will give you a lot of training on how to scrub properly before the very first day. The other very important thing that you need to do though when you first show up to the OR is introduce yourself to the scrub nurse because oftentimes these people will have no idea who you are. They've never met you before. They don't know if you're going to be taking part in the surgery, what your role is. So explain this to them and then also make sure that you have equipment that's specifically laid aside for you. Make sure that you have a sterile surgical gown and then also make sure that you have gloves available but then also make sure you know what size gloves you need to use. So these are these surgical gloves. They are different. These are sterile surgical gloves um, and the sizing is different than the blue nitrile gloves that you're going to be using pretty much everywhere else in the hospital. So I wear a size seven and a half of the uh, sterile surgical gloves. Normally when I'm wearing the blue gloves, it's about a large, I'll wear a large size glove and it fits me pretty loosely. I like to have a lot of like mobility inside the glove, but when you're doing surgery, you want the glove to fit you pretty snugly. Like there's not going to be a lot of wiggle room around and that's to improve your dexterity. So that's the conversion. The takeaway with that little rant is that when the scrub nurse asks you what size glove you wear, do not respond with large. You are not a large, you are a seven and a half. That was probably one of the dumbest things I did on my first day of surgery. Tip number three is going to be to review your anatomy ahead of time before the actual surgery. And the easiest way to do this is, especially if you're on a service like orthopedics where the surgeries are planned out in advance, is to get a hold of the surgical schedule either the week before or in the very least the weekend before to go over everything that has to do with the anatomy of that particular surgery that you're gonna be working on. I would say that in order of importance when it comes to what the attending surgeons like to pimp you on in the middle of surgery, number one is going to be the basic and large structures that are 
are involved with the surgery. So that's things like the organs, the muscles, the tendons, anything involved directly with what you're going to be operating on. Then after that, the, the second most important thing I would probably say is blood supply. Uh, what different vessels are supplying what different regions that you're operating on. And then finally is going to be nerve innervation. And on that note, I want to take this time to shout out today's video sponsor, KenHub. If you guys have never heard of KenHub before, they are an entire online anatomy hub. Everything that you need to know about anatomy from the large scale structures all the way down to the neurovasculature can be found on KenHub. Their premium service on their website also gives you access to things like quizzes to track your learning, as well as additional resources like things to learn about histology and also medical imaging, x-rays, anything that you need to know about anatomy, you could go ahead and use KenHub for. So I wanna thank KenHub so, so much for sponsoring today's video. If you guys do wanna go ahead and check them out, you could use the link in the description below for 10% off their premium service or you could check them out entirely for free on their YouTube channel where they have hundreds of different videos trying to help people learn anatomy. Now moving on back to the list, tip number four is do not break the sterile field the love of all that is holy. If you want to piss off a surgeon, the worst thing that a brand new medical student could do is break the sterile field. And the easiest way to go about and stopping yourself from doing it once you're all done up is by taking your hands and crossing them and keeping them on your abdomen in the area just below your nipples once you're all done up in your gown and you have your gloves on. And normally if the surgeon is right-handed, they will ask you to stand if you're going to scrub in just to their right, kind of tucked up against the, the surgical bed where the patient's lying down. But always make sure that you ask them beforehand where they want you to stand, just in case it's a particular surgery. You don't wanna break the sterile field. And never forget guys, that it's not just your hands. Not breaking the sterile field means that you need to have total body awareness in terms of making sure that you know where everything is, especially if you're a little bit taller. Like I'm about 6'1 or 6'2, 6'1 and a half. I'm never usually the tallest person everywhere that I go, but on this one particular day, I was the tallest person in this surgery by a, a decent margin. There was a light that the surgeon uses to shine onto different structures where they need to make a cut and things like that. And it was just too low. And I was so focused about making sure that my hands and my body was in the correct position that I wasn't even paying attention to my head and my head hit the handle to move the light. Luckily in that case, you could just pop the handle off and replace it with a, a different one. You don't need to stop the surgery, but uh, learn from my mistakes don't do something worse make sure that you don't break that sterile field and finally tip number five will lighten things up for the very last one is to learn how to read the room that is going to be the final tip i've talked about this in the past in my orthopedic surgery vlog but there are definitely times when surgery is very stressful especially if there is a particularly difficult surgery or maneuver that the surgeon's working on or there's a complication that arises but there's also other times when everything's going exactly the way that's planned it's a procedure that's been done many many times with this particular surgeon the music's playing in the background and you guys are able to have a little bit of fun with it i know they could be super intimidating in the beginning but never forget that surgeons and, and all doctors are just people too and surgeons specifically because they end up spending so much time in the hospital i've noticed that a lot of them like to make jokes whenever time will allow for it or they like to make things a little bit lighter than always being heavy and depressing all the time. So being that medical student that knows how to read the room, knows how to take a joke from the surgeon if they're talking about a life experience they had or a story that they had from back when they were in medical school and then offering something back yourself. You don't wanna be that student that is only there to dictate facts that they've read out of a book. It makes the environment and it makes the interactions that you have with these people a lot better to show that you are personable and you can relate to them on a different level than just medical facts. Uh, and it makes the whole day go by faster. But anyways, guys, those are going to be my tips for your very first day in surgery. I promise you that if you do even half of these, you're going to have a much smoother first day than if you didn't do any of these tips before. But anyways, we'll see you guys all in the next one. Hope you learned something from this one. Everyone take care.